From WHAM Rochester, this is 13 WHAM News at 6. Good evening. We begin tonight with some breaking news out of Williamson in Wayne County. State police say a woman's body has been found near Pease and Beach Roads, again in Wayne County in, in Williamson. The cause of death is not yet known. Uh, 13 Miles Mike Doria is at that scene. We expect a live report from him as soon as he has a chance to uh, talk to authorities there and bring us more information. But uh, for now, the body of a woman found in Williamson. We will pass, up, uh, pass off the updates as soon as we get them. Going to move on to, uh, to politics now. Two Republicans are still in the running for governor tonight. John Faso received a boost as the party's designee, but William Weld earned enough support to force a primary. 13 Wham's Kyle Clark examines a divided party. Republicans were torn in the race for governor. John Faso won nearly 60% of the vote. His more liberal opponent, William Weld, 40%. Winning 60% of this vote uh, is a major milestone uh, against a lot of the odds uh, where people said that our candidacy was uh, never going to get beyond uh, first base. Local Republicans on the floor of the convention look to spin their division as a strength. Greasetown Supervisor Jack Auberger. Well, it was a, really it was an issue of um, you know democracy in action. It's a natural uh, part of the process to have competition in regards to who would be the next uh, governor. Ontario County Republican Chairman Jay Dutcher. I think having two articulate candidates out uh, discussing the issues is going to be a positive development. State Chairman Steve Manerick from Monroe County backed Weld, but Manerick couldn't get a majority of delegates to rally behind his man. Faso's supporters held strong. I'm in awe of all those people out there who stood with me uh, in the face of a fair amount of pressure from some places. Many wonder if this will hurt Manerick's standing with the party. But the Ontario County chairman who opposed Manerick's hand-picked candidate says this was about the candidates and not the party leadership. Uh, even with the support of the state chairman, Bill Weld came in at 40%. So uh, I see, I don't think people were really viewing this as a referendum on Steve Manerick at all. He's a, he's a strong chair and he ran an open process. Manerick might have been in a no-win situation. His candidate lost, so some could say he isn't a strong enough party leader. But if his man had won, he then would have been open to criticism that he strong-armed his favorite through the Democratic process. Yeah. So it was a tough yeah. one for him, admittedly. So now we move on to the primary. If Faso wins the primary, then what challenges for Steve Manerick? I mean, it certainly can't help yeah. if his guy loses a second time, and there's talk at that point that he might step down in favor of somebody else, maybe who's in the Faso mm -hmm. camp. A name that's come up quite a bit is Ed Cox. You'll remember him. He mm -hmm. was running for Senate, then dropped out. He got behind the Faso yeah. campaign. All right. Hey, thank you, Kyle. At the uh, Democratic nominating party this week in Buffalo, Elliot Spitzer, of course, won the party's backing in his run for governor. Fellow Democrat Tom Squazzi did not attend the convention. He is running a petition drive to force a September primary. Police have charged a bus driver in Wayne County with accidentally leaving a physically and developmentally disabled woman on his locked bus for five hours. Police say Norman LaPlante left his bus parked behind his company's building near Newark with the woman still inside. She's okay. He's charged with endangering her welfare. East Rochester police say a man was intentionally hit by a car overnight after a bar fight. It happened outside Michael's 2 Tavern on Main Street. Police say three men were harassing people and a patron asked them to leave the area. They say the men then hit that man with their car. Consumers are feeling some relief at the gas pumps today, but not as much as was anticipated. When lawmakers passed the new gas tax cap, it was supposed to reduce the price by at least four cents a gallon. Actually, you'll save about two and a half cents a gallon because the state sales tax is figured on the price of gasoline before those taxes are added. Computation-wise, is very complicated. You almost need to be a CPA to, to, to compute the sales tax rate, but it's, it works out to be generally about two and a half to three cents a gallon. Dealers will be monitored by the tax department and the state consumer board. Dealers who don't comply with the law could face a fine of up to $5,000 a day for each violation. All right, the giant scoreboard is up. It will be ready for kickoff at Paytech Park on Saturday night. The Rochester Rhinos open the park this weekend, and crews are making sure the stadium is ready. Tomorrow, they'll add about 1,000 temporary bleachers to provide more space for what is expected to be a sellout crowd. So... Where is the best view? 13 Wham's Evan Dawson polled the coaches and the players and found the most popular seats are not where you might expect. 
10,000 fans walk into Paytech Park for the first time Saturday night. They'll have a chance to find out just how good their seats are. The players will be creating the action, but if they could watch, most, like goalie Scott Vallo, would end up in the upper deck. I prefer to be a little bit higher so I can have, see a little bit more of the game um, and a little bit off to an angle as opposed to right at midfield. Now you might think the owner's favorite seat would be down at field level or maybe in one of the suites, but he says this seat right here, second row, section 307, is his favorite seat in Paytech Park. I've been up there quite a few times. I've done a lot of interviews there, and the sight line is spectacular there. I like the upper deck, and I don't think there's a bad seat, really. No bad seats at all? Well, we sat in the far upper corner, top row, last seat over, and as Frank Duras says, you can see the entire field without a problem, even from here. Only a few seats in the south side bottom level have somewhat obstructed views. The team's bench box gets in the way. But this happens to be the section where the Rhinos coach would rather sit. Well, I haven't sat in all of them yet, but I've sat on mine, the bench, and uh, that's not my favorite seat because you can't see as much as I'd like to see. I'd prefer to sit up in... Uh, about the mid-level here. The rowdiest fans, known as the Stampede, will sit, or more likely they will stand in the north side corner section. And families should know that this section will not be afraid to sing and chant, even if the words they're chanting are a little edgy. There is no overhang at Paytech Park to block the seats from rain. So if you are headed to Saturday's opener, it might be a good idea to bring a little rain gear, just in case. Evan Dawson, 13 Wham News. Second row, 307, bring umbrella. All right, also the Rhinos announcing some additional shuttle services that will transport fans through the opener on Saturday. They have provided a complete parking guide on the team website. And, of course, there's a link to that on our website, 13wham.com. Plans for a new Walmart Superstore will be presented in Lima tonight. Representatives answered residents' questions last week about that new store on Route 15A. There are some concerns about keeping the area rural. It would have to be rezoned. There will not be a decision tonight. And there's more ahead on 13 Wham News at 6. Later, why a change in scenery for one local graduation ceremony is making so many people upset. Chauffeur me to the ball game. See me in the front row. Move over. Buy me some peanuts and caviar. When I Play the Subway Series instant game from the New York Lottery with 12 chances to win up to a million dollars. Coming up, meteorologist Richard McCullough's weather authority forecast, featuring the power of five live radars with ultimate Doppler radar. Having problems with your garage door? Call the experts at Feluca Garage Doors. They'll fix your problem fast. Three fifty-two Empire Boulevard. Hey, Dad. What's this? Long-term care insurance. Oh. The fact is, your mom and I need to start thinking about nursing home or home care in case we need it someday. Yeah, that's good thinking. Mike's father never did any planning. Now it's all on us. Mm, I know. But this way, your mom and I will have some control over what happens. And it costs a lot less if we buy it now. I really wish Mike's dad would have done the same thing. Well, I... To learn more, contact the New York State Partnership for Long-Term Care. Have you ever seen an Anderson Water commercial on TV and thought, I wonder if an Anderson Water system would help with my cracked, dry, and itchy skin? Well, it will, and I'll guarantee it. Closed captioning is brought to you by Hartwood Fine Windows and Doors, a division of Rochester Colonial, building one-of-a-kind windows and doors, one at a time. Now, the Weather Authority forecast. Richard McCullough in for Glenn Johnson tonight, and a lot of people over at RIT getting ready for the uh, the corporate challenge, the Chase Corporate uh, Challenge. This is the 11th one they've held. We've got a team from Channel 13 there, and yep. I, I guess they're going to keep keep an eye to the sky tonight. Yeah, kind of uh, muggy out there. Might see a spotty shower, but mainly dry. We'll be watching it for you, but the, the activities mainly south of the thruway will zoom in with our ultimate Doppler radar. Also show you the forecast over the next several days as well, as always. Let's take a look outside, and as you can see there, we have cloudy skies, and looking at downtown Rochester, temperatures in the mid-60s, and lots of moisture in the atmosphere, so we are expecting a uh, kind of a foggy night around here in many spots. 
let's go to the live Ultima Doppler radar. And uh, we are really up, lighting up the board this, uh, this afternoon and this evening. You can see this large area of showers and thunderstorms, especially those south, again, south and east of our uh, viewing area. We are tracking, though, a cell that's been moving across Canandaigua, Honeyoy, and now moving uh, through Pinyan and south, of, south and east of Pinyan right now. Again, these are isolated showers and storms with some heavy downpour, some lightning, also a little small hail, as you see as well. So we'll be watching those. They're dotting the, uh, the radar, but they're mainly those south of the thruway. So we'll be uh, checking in, of course, throughout the evening. 65 degrees right now. Nothing really severe being reported right now. Winds out of the north at 12 miles per hour. The humidity is up there. And uh, for the rest of the evening, those temperatures will hover in the 70s in many spots. So between 6 and 8 o'clock, we'll be in the 70-degree uh, range. Tomorrow morning, we'll be in the low to mid-60s in many spots, 60 degrees in downtown Rochester by, by 8 a.m., 62 degrees in uh, Batavia. And then by tomorrow afternoon, uh, we are looking at temperatures. Again, they're going to hover in the upper 60s and low 70s in many spots for tomorrow afternoon. We will see ample clouds in the mix for tomorrow. Might see a shower as well. But the forecast, as far as the lake is concerned, you can expect more clouds for tomorrow, just a little bit cooler, waves uh, a foot or less for tomorrow. The water temperature is at 53 degrees for your Friday. Well, we are expecting this uh, frontal boundary, which is moving across the area right now, to be well to the south and east of our area by overnight. But lots of low-level moisture, so we are, we are expecting some patchy fog developing in the overnight. And as you start today tomorrow morning, 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, cloudy skies. Most of the rain, though, south and east of our area. But we'll be watching this boundary uh, for the weekend because it could uh, uh, give us some unsettled weather. We're looking for clouds, maybe some showers to be associated with this system throughout the weekend. By 1 o'clock uh, Saturday, looking for cloudy skies and those temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s. For the rest of the evening, though, isolated showers, maybe a crack of thunder, mainly though south of town. Cloudy and muggy, 73 to 68 degrees. Tomorrow morning, that fog really picks up in the overnight and toward the morning hours. Some early fog, cool 60 to 65 degrees. Then by tomorrow afternoon, we are expecting, again, mainly cloudy skies. Can't rule out a shower, but mainly cloudy skies, but relatively cooler, not quite as humid for tomorrow, 69 to 74 degrees for your Friday. Here's your seven-day planner, 74 for tomorrow, 69 degrees for Saturday. Again, unsettled weekend, uh, 73 for Sunday. The good thing is that by Monday, we will see that sun return for sure. Uh, and temperatures back into the mid-70s, about normal for this time of year. Upper 70s and near 80 degrees by Wednesday yeah. and low 70s and some rain by Thursday. All right. Hey, thank you, Richard. Okay. We want to take a moment to look ahead to uh, 11 o'clock and look ahead here as well. We will have an update on the investigation into the death of a woman found in Williamson. We'll have that at 11 and also here at uh, 6 as soon as we hear from Mike Doria. Also tonight, listening to uh, The Way to Change at the Cinema in Rochester. Lights have changed tonight. Plus... Expectant mothers taking superstitious steps ahead of next Tuesday. All of that and more coming up at 11. Up next, it is a rite of passage and is causing some grief for people out in Greece. I'll tell you why some parents say this year's graduation venue is just not the right location. Neighborhood weather reports are made possible by Isaac Heating and Air Conditioning. 13 Wham News brought to you by Kaufman's. Picture yourself in the newest summer fashions at Kaufman's Super Sale right now. Save on the hottest looks store-wide, like Ideology, IE, and Valerie Stevens, 25% off. Great-looking sportswear for guys, 30 to 40 off. Save 50% on all gold and silver. Plus, kids' playwear is 25 to 40% off. Whip the house into shape and save during our bath and bedding clearance. Use your extra 15% off store charge or shopping pass at the Super Sale, only at Kaufman's. With two convenient locations, Johnston RV Country now offers you the oldest, most respected names in the industry. In fact, we're the only dealer for Coachman, Jayco, and Monaco in the area. At Johnston RV, you'll get a lot more than just a great price. You'll get the RV experts with service facilities at both locations. So when you think RV, think Johnston RV, and have your family see our family today on Ridge Road in Webster or Route 21 North in Palmyra.
This is Annie. Annie now starts every day using Crest Pro Health. It helps protect her mouth against plaque and gingivitis for a full 12 hours and without the burn of alcohol. Crest Pro Health works overtime. And so does Annie. Now in cool wintergreen flavor. You're watching 13 Wham News at 6 with Don Elhart, Chief Meteorologist Glenn Johnson, and Mike Catalana on Sports. 13 Wham News. More local news, more local experience. Graduation is usually a happy time for high school students and their families, but some parents in Greece want to move this year's ceremony. Now, the district is holding all graduations at the new Performing Arts Center at uh, Greece Athena. As 13 Wham's Patrice Walsh tells us, some students say it is not a neutral location, and parents say it's too small. There's not enough room for the Greece Olympia Symphonic Band to perform at graduation, so only a handful of members will play. Tickets are also limited to four per family. Seniors like Tom Hadley say this isn't how they wanted to go out. I know a lot of people might look at this and say, okay, your graduation got moved, get over it, that's life, welcome to the real world. But the real world's also full of opportunities to take the initiative and make wrongs right, and that's, that's, that's what this is. The Greece School District is rethinking its decision to move graduation ceremonies for all four of its high schools to the Performing Arts Center after hearing from some disappointed students and parents. Parents of some graduating seniors want the graduation ceremony moved. In fact, they'd like to have it right here, outside on the football field. Parents sent this letter home to get support from other families. It's not undoable. I, I, I think it's, um, there's a lot of people willing to work very hard to, to make this happen. It would be good if we have it at the football field, so, so invite more people and to see, you know, everybody there. It allowed me to invite the rest of the family that doesn't have tickets, because four is not enough. They already have the support of the school and the district. If we can pull everything together and it's a day where we're not drenched or people aren't fainting from heat, Absolutely, we can graduate outside. We hear their concern. We see many positive reasons why it makes sense to have the graduations in the district, but we are not opposed to having conversations about changing it. If the weather cooperates and other details are worked out, the Olympia class of 2006 will graduate outside, and the entire band will play on. In Greece, Patrice Walsh, 13 Wham News. Parents can learn more about the proposal to move the graduation at a meeting next Wednesday, June 7th, in the Greece Olympia cafeteria. Now to Wall Street, where stocks are solidly higher for the second day in a row. The Dow Jones Industrials gained 92 points. The Nasdaq picked up 41, while the S&P 500 advanced 15 and two-thirds. Here now, a closer look at some stocks of local interest, except for GM Oil. On the plus side today, paychecks up 96 cents a share. Mike Catalano's here in sports coming up. Don, the Sabres are hurting going into tonight's Game 7. We will tell you why, and we'll see what has him so fired up in the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sports is next. They have proven they're there for each other. 13 Wham News brought to you by Rochester Colonial. Rochester Colonial. Enjoyable, affordable, and beautiful. Eclipse awnings are on sale exclusively at Rochester Colonial. Hundreds of colors and fabrics, all installed by Rochester Colonial experts. And with our remote-controlled retractable models, you can have a total eclipse of the sun on demand. Purchase now and receive free installation, a $350 value. Rochester Colonial. As always, higher standards, lower prices. Hyundai is taking on Honda and Toyota with the Hyundai Challenge. We're out to prove that our new Sonata is the best value running. Here are the stats. More standard safety features and interior space than a Honda Accord. America's best warranty and $4,500 less than an Accord. You owe it to yourself to check out the fuel-efficient Hyundai Sonata. Before you spend too much on a Honda or Toyota, take the Hyundai Challenge today. During the Hyundai Challenge, get a new Sonata V6 with up to $3,000 cash back. Hurry. Offer ends June 30th. Visit City Mattress during the Dream a Little, Save a Lot sale. Going on now at City Mattress. Hi, 
sorry. Want a bike? No, thanks. It looks great, but I'm thinking... I'll take that. No, no, maybe that. Don't just watch calories with Special K. Get Whole Grain Total and watch Nutrition, too. 100 calories plus 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. 100 calories, 100% nutrition. Married two kids. Don't bother. Enjoy 100% delicious. Try three great flavors from Total. No rolling luggage. That's why Geico.com is so simple. Or is it because you can chat with an associate if you need help and get a free rate quote in minutes? 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Simple as that. Now, 13 Wham Sports. Game 7. On the road, the season on the line, and the Sabres will be missing another top defenseman tonight. Now it's Jay McKee that won't play. He's out with a staph infection from a cut he suffered in the Ottawa series. It was bad enough that he had to go to the hospital yesterday. And with Teppo Newman and already out, the Sabres will be even younger on defense. You'll see guys like Jeff Gilson skating this morning in Raleigh, playing in Doug Janik in regular roles. Nathan Pache, an Amherst, is expected to dress tonight. That's pretty much last year's Amherst defense. And it's a game number seven. Neither of his teams has a great history in game seven. The Sabres, one and four. Carolina, 0 oh and three. All three of those losses back to the days when they were the Hartford Whalers. But there's a stat for you. Home teams have won 62% of game sevens in NHL history. Lindy Ruff told the fans, don't be afraid in game six, but for game seven. You're probably going to have to be a little nervous. You know, it's a... Uh... You, you know, you're staring at the, uh, the the game that we wanted to get to. You know, and you got to wait all day long for it. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, I'll be, be truthful, be a little nervous too. But I'm excited at the same time. You know, it's uh, uh, what more could you ask for? Well, there's been pressure all this whole postseason. I don't think tonight's any different. We've had to win games uh, to move forward. So, and. Uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. You know, when you come down to a game like this, you just put yourself in a position where you give yourselves a chance. Game 7 tonight. They'll start at 7.30. We will have the highlights and the post-game story from Carolina tonight on 13 Wham News at 11 o'clock. We already mentioned the Rhinos in the stadium. They are ready. Saturday night, they expect a sold-out crowd, about 14,000 fans as they open up Paytech Park. You know, I've not had a home crowd bigger than a few thousand, so it's going to be an unbelievable feeling coming out here with a with a packed out crowd and uh, I know every one of the team is really looking forward to it. Well, the Rhinos are off to a great start. Five wins and two ties so far this year. French Open today. Wimbledon champ Maria Sharapova in a fourth round match against Ivetsa Benesova. It was all Maria today. Here she is on match point getting the winner. She advances with the straight set victory to move on today at the French. It's Thursday night so let's get the good, the bad and the ugly rolling. Tonight we're serving paper yeah once you finish the drink the cup don't throw it away all the plastic and the wax can be really tasty yeah keep chewing while we check out the good an infield hit possibility you no got him indeed. yeah how about the bad look out coach oh shake it off all right and the ugly oh first the collision then the punch. Oh, watch that again. Man, you wonder, what's that feel like? I don't even know how to explain what that feels like. Well, how about this? You get hit with a pitch, but you strike out. How'd that happen? The pitch pops him in the leg, but he swung and missed, and he's out. It defies explanation. And so does this. Miami's Dwayne Wade driving to the hoop for the bucket. And the foul. Look, he made it look easy. I've done this on the court before, the, the falling down part, not the throwing it in the hoop. Though well, they are 3-2 two, two in that series. What a shot by Dwayne. Great reaction. Huh? How you get those people? They all respond answer. Respond to all We that just stuff. ask. They come through. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And when we come back, our bright spot shines on caring baskets for little patients at Rochester General Hospital. 13 Wham News brought to you by Vecton.
At Vecton, we're more than your siding specialists. We offer the same great workmanship on doors, windows, and roofing, too. Done with attention to every detail. I continually refer people to Vecton as a way of saying thank you. Thank you for making our house look spectacular. We were impressed with how you encouraged our input. Take it from me, I'm Jim Salmon, and I'm just one of thousands of satisfied Vecton customers. Call Vecton today and picture your house looking great. This beautiful and powerful machine was built to ride on the open road. Hi, I'm Steve Barnes. Unfortunately, many drivers are careless when it comes to sharing the road with motorcyclists. The lawyers at the Barnes firm know motorcycle law. If you've been hurt in a motorcycle accident, call the area's largest personal injury law firm, the Barnes firm. We've helped many injured clients get the settlement they deserve. We'd be honored to help you. Solid, strong, successful. That's the Barnes firm. Call us today. Chevy SUVs can take on the toughest competitors, like Equinox. It stacks up to Lexus RX 330. Both come with a standard V6 engine and have sophisticated styling. Did you know Equinox has more rear seat legroom than Lexus or any SUV? Qualified lessees can get a low mileage lease on a 2006 Chevy Equinox LS front wheel drive for around $189 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Go to ChevyRochester.com. For 12 hours only, everything is on sale at Housework. This Saturday and Sunday, save up to 50% off everything in the entire store. Every single item is on sale, including special orders. Everything is on sale for 12 hours with free financing available. This is a sale you don't want to miss. It's a one-time opportunity to save. Shop our fabulous store this Saturday and Sunday. It's the 12-hour sale this weekend at Housework. See you there. Finally tonight, a look at seniors at Gates Trilai High, making a difference for pediatric patients at a local hospital. Health team reporter Christine Webb has tonight's Bright Spot. It's part of a community service project at the school. Do good for others. And that's just what these three seniors did. They applied for and received a $400 grant which they're using to make care baskets for pediatric patients at Rochester General Hospital. This is a mission that means a lot to Crystal. My nephew was in Strong um, for four years and passed away in 2000, so really that gave me a big idea on how to do it. And the students did everything themselves, from making the proposal to shopping and making the baskets, which includes everything from coloring books, crayons, and a teddy bear. They'll then deliver them next week. I think the lesson that is most important for them is to be doing something for other people, uh, in this case for children. I hope that they are happy. So our bright spot tonight shines on a graduating lesson for these high school seniors. A lesson on giving and receiving and helping others that will hopefully last a lifetime. Christine Webb, 13 Wham News. And now we have more on the breaking news out of Williamson in Wayne County. State police finding a woman's body near Peace and Beach Roads. Mike Dory on the phone. Mike, uh, anything you can tell us at this point? Well, not very much. I can tell you a lot of the, the road is blocked off in the area where we are. It's a very rural area. In fact, on one side of the road, there's a ditch, and that's been between sort of two houses. On the other side of the road is an apple orchard. At this point, there's a lot of uh, state troopers on the side of the road sort of looking at the body and trying to piece together mm -hmm. this investigation. But... Not a whole lot. We're still waiting for one of the uh, majors to show up and give us a little bit more information. They may release an age on the woman, but uh, they're not saying much. One of the questions certainly is, this a migrant worker? We just don't know yet. All right. Uh, we will look for more on an update from Mike Doria tonight at 11 o'clock as well. Stay tuned now for the ABC World News tonight. We'll have more at 11.